how this works. This is live, folks. Anything can happen. Good evening, bro. How are you? Very well, sir. I'm just going to introduce you, sir, and then I'm going to put you in front of the camera so everyone can see you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the privilege tonight to have one of the most... Well, he knows more about racing than anybody. He's been TV presenting for 50 years this year. And he also was a jockey and rode over 100 winners. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Prof Scott. Well, it's very, it's very nice to be here with you, Gary. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us, Prof. It's a pleasure, and it's a pleasure meeting you at Gary Moore's stable. Um, you was there for your second stint for Bob Champion. Um, he'd done amazing, didn't he, Prof? Well, it's, it's, it's splendid because he's... Again, when you think it's 40 years since Old and Easy, and before that, 18 months before that, I mean, I, I was a, quite a good pal of his, and am still. I mean, we really did. We thought he was going to die. Forget about ever riding again. No one thought he'd ride again. No. I think the Women's Grand National was a joke. And then, only a, a, a bit more than a year before, all the Easy broke down again. So... There was no chance all the easy with the Grand National anyway. No. So the two to win was a million to one, really. Unbelievable. And him you know, raising money for his charity is very fantastic. Brilliant, fantastic. Well, you started your career. You, you was a jockey then. Not many people are going to know this, but uh, you was a jockey. You rode over 100 winners. What was your favourite moment as a jockey, bro? Uh, I think winning the Imperial Cup of Sandown, which in those days... Um, it's a, the Saturday before Shelburne is still a reasonable race, but it was a very big handicap in those days. It was sort of probably second to what we call the Schweppes, and now it was the to Gold Trophy in Newbury. It was a really big competitive handicap, and it was a horse who only run twice, and he was a novice. And I'd broken my arm, and it was only two rides back from the, I'd ridden the day before, two days before. And uh, he was favourite. And, I mean, it basically, it was obviously looking back on the question when I mess it up. But he was also much the best horse in the race, but he was very inexperienced. And he dropped out last in a big handicap fever. And the most beautiful thing for a jockey always is that behind horses know you've got more horse than the others have. Yeah. And therefore, what you've got to do is to put the knife in at the right moment. Brilliant. And you just got always... The so many people watching racing complain if a horse has come too late, but so many more races are lost because as a jockey you come too soon. Jockeys always, often people don't notice it. They think, oh, we was there early enough. Last was just only I'd come later. <laughs> Brilliant. And, and one of the things you always, always say as a jockey, if you, if you hit the front and then get overtaken, you played your cards wrong. Yeah. Because the whole deal about race riding is you put a deck of cards, which is the horse's ability and talents, and you've got the race around you. Yeah. If you play your cards, you play all the races in the beginning, now you've got to just rush up in front. Absolutely. It, it may win, but so often you can actually get you can get beat on a good horse. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and People, if you play your cards right, you can win on not the best horse. Really? And that's when, that, that's when really good jockeys show, and why I only rode 100 winners. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you turned a um, TV presenter, Bruff, and I believe you're coming up to your 50th year. And 50 years ago, a horse called Brigadier Gerard won the Guinness, and you've done a lovely interview with um, um, Smoking Joe, they called him, and... Um, how how did you find um, how did you find him as a as a fellow? He's he's a lovely guy, wasn't he? Well, it was um, it was quite sort of shocking to hear he died. Funny enough, I was rung by the Times newspaper, and I was down on a hold on the holiday yeah, in the Isle of Wight about four o'clock and said he died. And would I write a bishop? So I had to write by Robert fast, but. Only a fortnight before, we did an interview for the television at Newmarket, and his his um, his daughter Sarah had driven him from Newbridge to Newmarket. We're not that close. No. 
He was there as he always was, not on time, but before time. As unfortunately I often was, I was uh, behind time. <laughs> I had excuse. I got stuck in the traffic because there was a there was a breakdown. Right. I mean, he'd left an hour to spare, so he was ahead of me. Um, but he was completely on the ball. He's 86 years old, completely on the ball. Uh, we had a we talked for an hour and a half probably. Yeah. And put it together. And in many ways, and I'm only I'm eight years younger than him, uh, and, and that he was, which is a difficult phrase to say. But he was completely together, and he had a heart attack, and he died. Oh. And um, when the time comes. Uh, and it'll come. Uh, the one thing I know it'll come. Uh, I hope it takes me as quick, but I do hope I can do a few more years yet. Oh, absolutely, mate. You've been around quite a few times. Who's your favourite person you've actually interviewed? You know, you've interviewed great people like the Lester Piggotts, the Willie Carsons. Which one sort of sticks out in your mind at the moment that you think that was fun? Well, of course, the most fascinating was uh, and probably always will be Lester Pigger because he was such a complete one-off. Yeah. I mean, there never has and never will be anyone like Lester Pigger because he completely, I mean, today's generation won't realise it, but he completely, uh, to a fault, really, dominated the game. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, for good and bad, because, you know, he, 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 he was such a talent and such a personality that he sort of dominated all and, he also ruined a whole generation of jockeys because they tried to imitate him. Yeah. And, and he, was, he was a complete one-off. And his actual mechanics, he was, he was in those days, quite tall for a jockey, but he rode very short. Mm-hmm. And they tried to ride like him. And they imitated what they could see. But he could get away with his mechanics because he had such extraordinary... Uh, he had two quite unique gifts. One was the um, innate understanding of racehorses um, and what they would and wouldn't do beneath him. And the second was his 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 will to win. He, he was if he wanted to win, he would he would use every possible piece of his machinery, uh, mentally, physically, and anything else. And, and he. He was a he was a force that was uh, yeah. way beyond he else has been around. Um, uh, and I was his ghost. I mean, <laughs> the first thing I did when I stopped fighting is I, I I got a column for the Evening Standard, and after a year, the guy ran me up with some great news, and nobody in those days was those just singers. Ghosted columns. Everybody had a column. Huh? Yeah. In fact, I. I was writing a column for the Observer when I turned professional, and they wouldn't let me write a column in the Observer, even though I was writing myself, they were ghosted, <laughs> because the police can't write columns. Wow. That's 19... Wow. Let's, 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 let's bring you up to date then, bruv. Um, who, who's your favourite jockey now? What you know? Who do you like in style and everything else? Who, who sticks out for you as your favourite jockey at the moment, at present time? Well, it's obviously the flat and jumps. Flat, the, the master of in all what at the moment is run or yeah. mentally and mechanically everything else. Uh, Holly Doyle is an exceptional talent in her own way and, and, and unique in, 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 in what she's doing. I remember she reminded me of Bill Shoemaker because she's very, very small and she has a will around her, but she also. It's got quite a touch of Willie Castle about her. She's eight stone. And actually, her partner, Tom Markham, is very talented. Yeah. And very technically. Uh, but again, I think it's a very good bunch of young flat race jockeys. Jump racing, it's been a problem. The, the, the Two of the greatest jockeys who have ever lived, probably the best two jump jockeys that, that have ever lived, were A.P. McCoy and Ruby Walsh. Yeah. And then leaving has left a bit of a gap. Uh, uh, the other people beneath them, um, you know, Richard Johnson retired now, 
are, are coming through. And, and you know, that, that they, it's very hard for them to measure up. And, and quite a few are, are, are sort of challenging, but no one's yet announced themselves. No. And if you've been like as I have, if somebody comes through, they have to really announce themselves. You can't just be quite good. No. When we came through, we were just there straight away. When, you know, when, when Skidmore came through, he was there. When Franklin was there, they were quite, always, everyone knew around them. Yeah. Exceptional. So people around them know it's exceptional talent. Absolutely. And then there isn't anybody yet who's shown that. And they may be, some people are slow burners. Willie Carson is a slow burner. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, but the, the sort of people who've got to be, to measure up to those is going to be very difficult. Yes. They will measure up, but they, they were beyond, I believe, anybody who's gone before in that different way. Walsh and McCoy, to have them together yeah. was something that most fans need to remember and treasure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot there. Next week is Derby Day. Um, have you got a horse that, I know we're a week away, is there a horse that we should be looking out for at the moment? Well, again, as we know, um, the good thing about the Derby is it's, it's, it's exceptionally open. Yeah. But it's also people nowadays, which is much more prevalent in my day, because of TV and stuff, everyone's seen all the horses. Yeah. And obviously, you know, the score, if Bolshoi Valley does what he did at Epistani, he'll probably win. But you, who knows? It's a very different zeal. Uh, the horses are much less exposed than they were. Uh, you, you, you can, I like working backwards. If on the Sunday morning you read that X and Y or Z won it, would you be that surprised? Right. And you really be a lot of horses. Mm. You know, the, 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 the two Godolphin horses, the Hurricane Laura, it's called, in the, 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 the one ruler, they both, but he, if it read they won, um, the, I'm, on Tuesday, I'm going to see, because it's 50 years since um, Ian Balding, King's Clear, won the derby with Mill Reef. Right. And they've got youth spirit as an outsider. You know, I'm, going to, I'm just going to go down because I'm going to do something about, about for the times. Wow. And I think that one of these, an outsider each way is probably what you ought to do. Uh, uh, there's, there's, there's plenty of them, really. You, you can take a few on. Brilliant. Uh, and, uh, and I, I would not get bowled over by anything because everyone knows there's no guaranteed form book. No. Uh, or, I mean, Max Swinney has clearly got the, basically the best form. He's won the Guinness. Yeah. And, and he won a group one of the two year olds. So that, that is, in basic historical terms, the best form. Really? But whether he manages it again, who knows? But um, he, he, he's a a tough and admirable horse, and I'm a great uh, friend and supporter of his trainer, but trainer, breeder, and everything else, <laughs> but uh, Jim Bolter. But, um, you know, 50 years since Bill Reef, I mean, none of these are anything within the stone of Bill Reef, let's be clear about that. Yeah. Uh, Bill Reef won the Coventry Stake by six lengths, you know, the Jim Crap by ten lengths, the, the Zeros by four lengths, you know. And after Derby, he won the Eclipse of King George of the Ark. Uh, but none of, none of these are going to do that. But they are, somebody's going to win the Derby. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, the one listening uh, can pick their own this year. And uh, yeah. I think, I particularly be, every chance will be a long, long price. Yeah, absolutely. Not, but each way horse. Absolutely. So get, uh, you can all have your opinions. Absolutely. Bruh. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute privilege, um, bruv. And I hope you'll be at Sandown on June the 12th because uh, that'll be my first day out on the race course since lockdown and uh, it'd be lovely to come and say hello. But, uh, bruv, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. You're an absolute superstar for joining us and everyone's putting up thumbs and hearts and uh, thanking for you coming on and joining us on our 57th charity race night. And... Uh, Yet again, Graf, thanks for your time, fella, and hope we'll catch up soon. No thanks to me. Remember, racing belongs to you. It belongs to everyone who enjoys it. And it's great to do this with you. Thank you okay. very much. Cheers, buddy. Bye-bye. What a superstar. Yeah.
can we just clear something up? Well, 